Hi there, it's Neil from Phase Drive Media. Um, here today to talk a little bit about our setup uh, and the sort of kit we use, and to focus a little bit on the uh, the iMac Pro behind me, and talk a little bit about that. This is not a review. There's plenty of reviews out there on the YouTube and opinions. It's more my perspective on its pros and cons and the things I particularly like about it. So first up, why buy an iMac Pro? Well several reasons. Um, bearing in mind they're not cheap things, they're quite expensive. What really sort of drove that decision? Well, I was working on an old um, MacBook Pro, so that really wasn't cutting it, for mainly for Cubase use. It was beginning to get overloaded by the project I was doing. Also needed something that's going to cope with 4K video editing, which sometimes I get involved in. Could have gone down the Windows route, but we do in Phase Drive Media operate multiple platforms. We tend to use software that is multi-platform. So, for example, Dropbox, Cubase, Adobe, because we aren't fixed to any one particular platform, Windows or Mac, because we have Mac and Windows users. Being a Mac user for a good six plus years, um, probably more than that, and always liked the operating system's simplicity and its stability. So, for me, that was quite a big decider. In, in deciding which one to go for, I was looking mainly at having enough power and grunt to do what I needed to do, but also to focus on the things that I couldn't upgrade easily. Um, because the iMac Pro has got good connectivity, so you can connect you know, other graphics engines and graphics cards, GPUs, you can connect more um, hard drive space, RAID. So um, it was things like the processor and the RAM that I really wanted to you know, focus on. So I went for 10 core, is 64 gig of RAM uh, with the lower spec GPU and for me that was perfectly all right. That was more than powerful enough, uh, especially for Cubase use. I've got power to spare, you know, I can really load up plugins, doesn't bat an eyelid, doesn't really affect it, so it coats very well with uh, the load I put on it using Cubase. So Cubase is our main go-to door, uh, digital audio workstation. Why Particularly Cubase, where it's something I've used for many years, something many of uh, Phase Drive Media are used to. It is cross-platform, works across Mac and Windows, and projects are easily exchangeable across those platforms. We haven't had any problems doing that. But it's just generally that you know you, you prefer different things because you get used to their way of working their logic. And Cubase has always had a very logical, easy feel. Um, we're using Cubase Artist and Pro 9.5. Really like them, really impressed, really good plugins in there. Also, we're big fans of Easy Drummer, very good plugin. It's a very quick and easy tool for creating drum tracks, right? professional sounding, natural sounding drum tracks. Easy Drummer is one of our core plugins. We use a lot of Waves plugins, it's a lot of the kind of analog uh, emulations, because we prefer that analog warm sound and also we use Garrison and Personal Orchestra for the strings and pianos because again it's, it's good value, it really works well and you know we can share projects across different users without so much problem. So other bits of kit, again we tend to use Steinberg interfaces which they, they marry very well with Cubase. I'm using the Firewire MR816, I've always found it really good, really good sounding preamps. Headphone wise tend to use Bayer Dynamic. DT880s, very good clean neutral sounding headphones. I've also got an Arturia key step, I don't need a massive keyboard. In terms of speakers, I'm currently using these little Genelex, these little things, and really find them good. They're very clean, very powerful, very revealing. These are the smallest ones that Genelec do and they might be upgraded soon, but yeah, I found them really good for this sort of size studio and room, plenty of power. Back to the iMac Pro. You can, for probably a lot less money, build your own Windows PC, which will have a similar level of performance. But like I say, you know, I'm fairly tied into the Mac OS. One thing that really impresses me about the iMac Pro is it packs a lot of punch into a comparatively small and, you know, quite stylish package. And I'm not that worried about the style, but the, the amount of grunt they pack into you know this this fairly small frame is is quite quite impressive. The other thing it does that you know quite impresses me is is I've got it set to encrypt 
on the hard drive, on the internal SSD, and it doesn't slow it down at all. It, so, so it's encrypting as well and giving, still giving you that, that level of performance. It's also relatively portable. I say relatively, it's not a small package to carry around, I wouldn't take it on a plane, but in a car, you know, with a big boot, yeah, you can take it with you. And f for its degree of portability, again, it's got a lot of power. I bought a special case. It does make a fairly meaty piece of stuff to carry around. It's fairly big, but you can transport it from one place to another with reasonable ease. So that's actually, you know, pretty useful because sometimes we're on location or visiting other studios and we need to take the whole you know, kit with us. I rarely, you know, even with the biggest project, Cubase project, I rarely push it beyond 20, 30%. And that's with a lot of plugins running. Some of our standard templates use 30, 40 plugins, you know, uh, EQ, compression, instruments, and, and it coats with that absolutely no problem. Um, so having the, the 10 cores and 20 threads is, is pretty handy. That amount of processing grunt is what you need. You need CPU power. Yeah, the RAM comes in handy, but it's down to the, the processing grunt that really makes the difference. For Cubase, it's ideal. For 4K editing, you know, we have managed to max it out, but you know, on the whole, it, it copes brilliantly and it renders really quick. Can you get faster machines? Of course you can. You know, there's plenty of debate online as to if you had a, an equivalent machine of this kind of workstation spec and you built it with the Windows components, it would cost you a similar amount. But yeah, that's not an argument that's you know, really want to get into. If you want that level of spec and you want that level of performance, it's going to cost you whether you go Apple or, or Windows. So yeah, to round up, iMac Pro, really good bit of kit for us. Fantastic. You know, some of us use Windows PCs and we should use Mac. Um, but yeah, I found it really good, really fantastic. So that's all for me, see you next time.